Farmer's Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. A backup singer. Ooh, singer. When you have the Farmer's Signal app with Crash Assist. Crash Assist. If you have an auto accident. We can send help if you want it. Wow, that sounds like a whole lot of something. Oh, get a quote yeah. at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select farmers branded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Angie's List is now Angie. And caring for your home just got easier. Whether you need help with routine maintenance or a dream remodel, Angie makes it easy to see reviews, compare quotes, and connect with top local pros who can get the job done right. Plus, you can see upfront pricing and instantly book hundreds of projects. No phone tag, just the work you need done at a time that works for you. Angie's got your to-do list covered from start to finish. Book your next home project today at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. That's right. We're riding with the King. Sports Radio 94 WIP. Joe Giglio with you. Howard Eskin with us. As always, brought to you by Xfinity Philadelphia's fastest internet and the sponsor of our Xfinity X1 Lounge. Howard, how are you doing tonight? Absolutely sensational. Waiting for an Eagles win. I don't know when. But they'll win another game this year. They better win more than one. They'll win. They should win some. They should win a good. Actually, I think they can win a decent amount of these last eight. And, and they're gonna. Everybody uh, will be playing. Uh, whether you could say they're healthy, you know, at this point in the season, a lot of teams have players hurt. But it seems like everybody's going to be in. Uh, uh, Gavante Maddox said he's going to play Sunday. Uh, yesterday, Slay said he's going to play on Sunday. So, you know, so things are looking up. But. And I, I don't want to take away um, any of the happiness we have with an Eagles win coming up sometime in the next one, two, three, or four weeks. Uh, but I'm just going to make a plea because I mentioned this to you right before we went on the air. Please, will people stop killing people in this city? I mean, I, I, you know, I don't want to put a damper at the beginning of the show, but it just I just saw another somebody else just got killed in the city, got shot down. Please stop. I know they, I mean, people listen to this radio station in droves. Please. That's all. That's, uh, and then I'm, I'm done. Just please, please stop. Yeah, it's, it's got to stop. I, I yeah. think we all agree with that. Howard, um, well, you said one, two, three, four weeks to a win. <laughs> I hope it's not four. No, it won't be four. I think it could be one. I think they could win this game on Sunday. You know They're two and a half point underdogs against the— uh, I think it's up to three, but that's all right. It's yeah. still within a field right. goal. Right, and they've had a lot of these games this year, about a three-point. Uh, the Atlanta yep. game, the Carolina yep. game, this game here Sunday. Here's the advantage that the Eagles have on Sunday. And in the past, not as much in the last couple of years, the last few years, because the Cowboys sucked. But when a team, it was, it was always a disadvantage to come off a Cowboys game for a team because they tried so hard because the Cowboys had all this, this cachet and it's the Cowboys. And emotionally, teams would really get up as much as they could yeah. for a Cowboys game. And that's hard to do every game of the season. Not only is Denver coming off a Cowboy game, they're coming off – a big a thirty to nothing win. I don't count those sixteen points that Mike McCarthy, that moron, uh, left his quarterback in for, and he is a moron and a dope. Uh, he's everything that's wrong with an idiot. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, did I rip him enough? I think that's good. Yeah. Okay, but it was thirty to nothing for all intents and purposes. They had a great game against the Cowboys. Yeah, and I think for Denver, that emotion had to be so high. And they had to come off that game so much, and it's hard for a coach. I remember I used to talk to Andy Reid about this a lot when I'd see some of these trends and some of these things that happen. And I would each week I would kind of just you know, I'd see him and say, hey, by the way, this week, blah, 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 blah. And he said, really? And it's just it's something that's there, and I think that's clearly – an advantage for the Eagles this week against the Broncos. Yeah, I agree. And they've had a weird season. They're five and four, but they won three straight. They lost four straight. Now they've won two in a row. It's like they're just like up, they're down, they're up, they're down. I, I don't think they're very good. I think they're a mediocre team. They're yeah, okay. They're an average team. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're an average team. The quarterback's pretty average too. Bridgewater. I'm not afraid of Bridgewater. Like he doesn't stack up to the guys that they've faced already this season, right? He's not in the same class as, as the quarterbacks that have torched no, them this year. Not even close. He's. Uh, you know what? I'm trying to think of the quarterbacks they've played. He's probably better than Goff. 
Yeah, I'd say he's played better than Goff. Okay, he's better than Goff, but is he better than any of the other? Obviously, he's not better he's than He's better than Darnold. Darnold. I mean, Darnold's a stat. Oh, yeah, that's right. They played Darnold, yeah. so he's better than Darnold. But, but he's worse than Matt Ryan. He's worse than Matt yeah, Ryan, and he's, he's certainly worse than the, the really good quarterbacks they face. Yeah, yeah so uh, yeah, he's not anybody that scares you. Their defense is good. I don't know if it's great, but it's good. And so, uh, but you, he, and it's such a simple thing. You can't turn the ball over, and the Eagles haven't turned it over that much. And when they did, they lose. Yeah, I got to say that's the, that's one thing about Hurts that he improved on a lot from last year. He threw he doesn't six. throw enough now to, to really well, turn but, the ball. But over. he did throw a lot early in the season. He only has yeah. four interceptions this year. No, I know. Yeah, that's that's yep. he, he Howard. It feels like he rarely puts the ball where you're like, uh oh, that's a that's a bad idea. What he's doing there. He, it's usually I mean, he might miss guys, but it's not it's not putting it in harm's way a lot. Sometimes you got to take more chances, but you got to weigh the pluses and minuses yeah. of I think he runs chances. instead of taking those chances. Yes, uh, probably so. And because he runs a lot, he's not going to throw as many interceptions. But it's always plus two is always a really good percentage. But if you don't turn the ball over at all, you have a really good chance of winning the game. And that's, I mean, that's not rocket science saying that. But, again, you just have to. And when you run the football, you don't turn the ball over. Although, get, was it Gainwell fumbled that ball? Close to inside the ten yard line, one of those. I yeah, which game it was? Well, he had the fumble in the Raider game. Yeah, did did Miles Sanders have a fumble one game too? But w- whatever the case, you're not going to turn it over that much when you're running the football. So they don't turn the ball over. Uh, they they don't give up easy plays, and if you can get, you can force Denver into at Bridgewater into a turnover. But I think emotionally is really that's such a big part of football games. And I think that's why coaches emphasize it. Sometimes it goes on deaf ears, right. and sometimes it doesn't. But when you have – it's an out-of-conference game, which is never an emotional game for a team. But the situation the Eagles are in, they've been close, uh, and they've been smoked uh, some games. But this is a game, when they look at it, they got a real chance to win the game. Mm-hmm. And just look at it this way. you know, And they know they – what's this, round 10 – <laughs> whatever he, yeah, they whatever got a lot of they got an extra round this year yeah, 17 right. rounds this yeah year. they got 17 rounds so it's round 10 so they don't look ahead but if you win win round 10 you have a chance to win two three maybe four straight now i don't think they're going to do so that so you got cuz all those teams are beatable yeah broncos and then next week's probably trevor simeon is the quarterback of the saints right yeah, now the saints just and i think the saints are going to win this week Ooh. and i think that's going to be an emotional win for them. So it's could be back to back weeks against the emotional high. Yeah, right. After that it's the Giants and it's I, I the Jets. I kind of look ahead. I look ahead cuz I'm allowed to look ahead. I'm not playing this by round. I'm just playing this by weeks. So so yeah, unlike Sirianni, you know who they're playing next week. Yeah, right. He told uh, Angelo he didn't know who they were playing yeah, next week. Well, it's just you know what? <laughs> he he probably doesn't look at it, right, but, he but he knows. So yeah, so it's Broncos, Saints back here, then the Giants Two and New the York Jets. games. Now, it's going to be hard to win two games in a row in New York, even though if you win the first, you definitely can win the second. But you got to win the first because it's the Giants number one. Yeah, and it's a bigger you know game. you're going to get the Jets. So I'm not saying that, you know for all these people that the Eagles. Yeah, you know, you say good thing. Here it is, Eagles, Howard yeah. saying four wins in a row is no, coming. Uh, I heard it. <laughs> I'm saying they have a chance. I don't think they're going to do it. But all those teams that they're playing are beatable. beatable teams, starting with this team on Sunday. So it's a it, and players look ahead. It's only natural that you look at. You can't look too far ahead. You just got to focus on this game. But yeah, they do have a chance. They win four in a row. I want people to kiss my rear end, but they're not going to win four in a row. Well, you got to put it out there. Then you got to say they're going <laughs> to win. No, four no, in a row. no, no. Yeah, no. I, I think they. I think they're going to start winning some games here. I don't think they're capable of winning four in a row. There's two. They're too no, up and down. Yeah, that's and that's the problem. They're too inconsistent. Yeah. They're just not a consistent enough team and not a good enough team to win four How in a row. How about this? They get three of these next four. They're going to come out of the bye with a legitimate chance to make the playoffs. They will. Yeah. Uh, that, so that three of the next four gives them six, right? Six, heading into the final four games. Okay, and the four games are... After that, they have Washington. Which is... And that Washington game is here. Here. Okay. Uh, home, so here against Washington, here against the Giants. Giants, yeah. Then so they go to Washington and they, and they come they home for Dallas. Dallas, yeah. So they have a chance to win. Let's say they win two of those games. So that would give them eight. Heading into the final week. Yeah. Well, it would give them eight. Yeah, heading into the final week. Against Dallas. Yeah, Who? they can't. Will they win nine? Nah. 
Probably not, unless yeah. Dallas lays down that last yeah, game. Yeah, but that, I mean, that, again, that's possible. They're they're such they're, they're they're an inconsistent team, so you really can't say that. If they were a good team, you'd say, or not inconsistent, you could say they could do that. They can't do that, but they yeah. Again, at the beginning of the season, I said seven or eight wins. They could be right there at seven or eight wins. Yeah, I think they. I think that's exactly where they're going to try. I feel like eight's probably the best number here and the most likely number. Two one five five nine two nine four nine four. All right, Howard. What was the uh, what was the Nick Sirianni message last week? You told us about the Peyton Manning video, <laughs> and uh, and look, whatever these th- whatever he's doing is working, right? They played well against uh, Detroit with the flower stuff. Yep. Then the Sir- the Peyton Manning thing. They played uh, they played hard on Sunday, and they were close. So what what was the message this week? Okay, so Nick Sirianni told me he played Kobe Bryant video mm. and you know the emphasis on mamba mentality, just keep on working as hard as you can, as hard as you can. It's kind of interesting because I saw Kobe as a kid obviously here and I knew yeah. his dad and then I got to know his grandfather and I saw him work and work. You know, the NBA was an extension of that Mamba mentality, and he emphasized that. And when you look at Kobe Bryant videos, you get fired. I got fired up when I pulled some off. I tweeted it out, and I pulled what somebody considered his 10 best plays. He's got 100 best plays. But you get fired up, but just the emphasis of that Mamba mentality. So that was his message, and I'm not suggesting this. But the, the the idiot that threw the flowers, that's one thing. But uh, uh, if you want to throw something, you want to throw Kobe jer- jerseys, just let me know because I'll follow Nick Sirianni in the locker room. <laughs> and there's good, they're good Christmas gifts. So I'll, oh, I'll they're give great Christmas yeah, gifts. Yeah, so you, you want to throw Kobe jerseys, go ahead. Uh, it's better. Well, if this catches on, people will do it. <laughs> that dope that threw the flowers. It was well, yeah, that, that's, what a dope. That's just wrong. And yeah. you should first of all, you shouldn't throw anything. anything. So I'm not encouraging that. But if somebody's going to throw a Kobe jersey, I might have to follow Nick Sirianni into the locker room and just pick them up as they're thrown down there. Uh, Howard, do you think we get anything different from the defense this week? I think that's what people are most frustrated with right now is the defense. You know, the offense, it's young, right? They're going to be up and down. The quarterback's young. The defense, that was just so difficult to watch on Sunday. And you know what? At least we could say, all right, that was Justin Herbert. If they, if they let Teddy Bridgewater complete 75% of his passes, I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah, again, it's only about five incompletions. Now, that's a lot. Well, it changes the game, though. You but, get off the yeah, field he, or not, a punt here's, or not. Here's the thing. There's so many quick passes. There's so many quick passes that they're going to be – and there were mistakes made in the um, in the secondary. There were mistakes and now the players that have spoken this week have acknowledged that there were mistakes made. So you can't make mistakes. You can, you should get up more on a receiver. If he's going to beat you deep, he's going to. If you're good enough, you're not going to get beat deep. And the quarterback's got to make the throw too. And Bridgewater doesn't make those but throws. Yeah, I, you know, Car- uh, Herbert makes those throws. Yeah. So the fact that they've played, look at the quarterbacks they played. So when you when you look at those percentages, these oh look, they've completed seventy five percent. But how many teams play – all right, Patrick Mahomes, I'm not going to put him in the Hall of Fame yet, but a good quarterback, even though they're, they're not good right now. Yeah. He's a good quarterback. We know about Tom Brady. Uh, we know – who am I missing? We uh, we now know about Justin Herbert. Yeah, Dak. Uh, Dak Prescott. I'm not going to put him in the Hall of Derek Fame, but he's, hard, but he's having a good year. And Derek Carr's playing I terrific. would say this year they have probably played five of the top – Twelve? Twelve. I was going to say ten to twelve. Yeah. Okay. Five of the top ten. That's a good number five of the top 10 to 12, in the front of their schedule. Now, I will make this guarantee, and this is a stone-cold mortal lie. Uh-uh, all right, Tucker, the way, cut, cut the audio here. Which, by the way, I have copyrighted. That is my copyright, stone-cold mortal lock, in the copyright and trademark building in the United States of America. So any of those dopes on social media try to steal it. You're yeah, coming for them. Yeah, it. Yeah, you can't, you, you <laughs> can't use it. It's mine. Uh, but whatever, stone-cold mortal lock that the rest of the season – Quarterbacks will not complete 75% of the passes. Well, Howard, I agree with you. And let's just say this. Forget the Stone Cold Lead Pipe Lock. If this defense <laughs> not, allows— Lead Pipe's not in my, okay, my copyright. For the Stone Cold Lock. Yeah. If this defense allows Trevor Simeon and Teddy Bridgewater and Mike White and Daniel Jones and and, and Heineke to complete 75% of their passes, right. these this coaching staff better not even show up here at the, yeah. next season. Just I'm leave. Tr- I'm trying to think of a schedule for the Eagles— and it's hard because you can't remember where the, you remember who they played, right. but not when they played. That this schedule 
was front loaded with so many good good teams and really good quarterbacks. I can't remember the last time it was front loaded with this many. So, you know, you can look at numbers. Everybody loves to look at numbers. That's the favorite thing in today's world. Uh, and they got to do a better job. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying they don't have to do a better job. They really do have to. You can't it is play unique, 10 though. yards off a guy when it it's 32. It is unique. Yeah. It's, it's rare that the schedule's like this. Yeah. So, but the rest of the season, stone cold mortal lock that – the percentage will not be 75%. To I mean, I don't, I don't think most of the quarterbacks they're facing, if you put 10 defenders out there, could complete 75% of their passes. No. They're not very good. I mean, that's, that's the point of all this. But they're all guys that get the ball out, except Dak. I, but Dak played him at the beginning of the year. Yeah. I'm still not in love with him. Uh, so, well, he's a good quarterback now. Yeah, he's a good quarterback, but he wasn't a good quarterback last week. But he's coming off, they'll, they'll say, oh, the excuse is he's coming off an injury. Uh, well, we'll see. It's it just good defensive teams. And Denver's better probably than some of the teams they've played. Yeah. Know, know what to do against Dak. And you don't really – you don't rush him with extra people. You put them in the secondary. They cause him problems because he does make the sit- – Well, he had a lot of problems stakes. with Denver last week. I yeah. think at one point in the fourth quarter, he was 8 of 24 for 102 yards. Yeah. He struggled. Yeah, and then he gets all those phony yards at the end of the game. Like, who cares? Uh, yeah. Fantasy football players. Uh, it's fantasy. Garbage time, Howard. It's t- total garbage time. All right, let's talk to Mike, who is up here on WIP. What's up, Mike? Hey, how are you guys doing today? Uh, wonderful. We're good, Mike. What's on your mind? Good, good to hear. Listen, I, you know, I had a little bit of a disagreement with Angelo in the morning. I don't Shut believe... Up. It's all on the defensive coordinator. I Correct. just don't think the Eagles' defense is that good. They have a front line that was supposed to be the heart of the team. They're nothing. You know, and even Hargrove, who's been the best defensive player, has been non-existent the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he's quieted down, Mike. And, and I think, to be fair, I mean, what are we expecting out of Javon Hargrove? He's not going to get 15 sacks. That's not the kind of player no. he is, right? So he got off to a good start. If he ends the season with six or seven or eight, that's, that's a good year. For him, but you're right, we, I, Mike. I agree with you. You make a great point. A, we don't have a linebacking core. You know, you say what you want, but these guys aren't that good. Okay, here's what I'll tell you, Mike. You make a good point, and I had it out with uh, that nit with Joe DeCamera today because when I'm on on Thursday at midday, what were, what were we fighting about today? Oh well, he's firing. He's firing uh, Jonathan Gannon. Did he already uh, fire Sirianni? Uh, you know, he's waiting on him. He's but he did. He wanted guys. to fire him. He and, wanted to yeah, fire him. We're yeah. back on. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> you know, the simple question is: there's there's a whole bunch of questions. Number one, you make a good point. The the players aren't good enough. Tell me how many good players they have on defense. I think Avante Maddox is the best defensive back they have, and he's playing. Yeah. He's having a nice year. I think he's the best that they have. They have about four good defensive players. Four or five uh, good who? good defensive players. Who? Fletcher's a good player. Oh, a defensive player. Yeah. yeah, but he's not playing at the same level he used to. And But I, I say good. I don't know if they have any Im, like impact guys. Okay. Good, so, good is different than So here's the thing. Okay, so they don't have enough good players. That's, that's the first thing. And that's a big, big uh, part of it. And you fire him. Okay, who are you bringing in, genius? Uh, is, I'm talking to Joe DeCamera. Who are you bringing in? Uh, you know, these people want to fire him. All these people want to fire him. Who are you bringing in? Juan Castillo. Uh, uh, no, you, well, you, are you going to change schemes? I don't know. So you can't bring somebody from the outside. You have somebody here, they do the well, same thing. it's the thing. middle of a season. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's so asinine and stupid. So it's like, identify good players for me. And, and then you can't identify enough good players. They've spent all their top picks uh, for four or five years on the offensive side of the ball, Mike. I'm, I'm sure you've noticed it. First and second round picks, they all go to offense. This is what happens after a while. Jonathan Gannon, and then the godfather of football, Ray Dittinger, uh, wants Seth Joyner to be a, a coach for the Eagles. Here's the reality. And when Seth was a player, I really got along with him well. He was a great player. Yeah, he was a terrific player. He had a great front four. But nonetheless, he was a, he was a terrific player, and then we had our issues when he wanted to blitz every play, and then we we get along great, but you gotta you gotta have experience if you're going to be a coach. You just don't bring this guy in and say okay because he can identify it while you're watching a game. It doesn't work like that. You yeah. can be a, you got to be able to work with players and understand what it takes to be a coach. Just because you're a player doesn't mean you're a good coach. Just because you can identify things, anybody can identify things, maybe not as well as Seth, but that doesn't mean you can make it happen. 
And yeah, you know, oh, they want Seth Joyner. Yeah, guys on TV sound great when they don't have to be in the trenches with a with really more defensively, and they use a lot of players, more average players, and I'll give them a break, more average players than good players. And so, and, and how many great players? None. Right. None. No, Zero. No. no. It, it's just not uh, – at one point, Fletcher Cox was a terrific player. Yes. But he's not no, that he's the client. client. Yeah. Howard, let me ask you a question. For one game, and this is just for entertainment purposes, who would you rather see coach the Eagles defense? So Gannon gets to stay home for a day. Seth Joyner, defensive coordinator, or Joe DeCamera? <laughs> I'd rather have no defense. No, I want to see the camera do it. Uh, oh, oh, he would have no shot. He is so clueless. Uh, he'd have no I shot. I just want to watch him react on the sidelines. I know. It, it's <laughs> just, it's just, you know, Seth understands the game very well, but you still, I think he had one part of a season with Buffalo years ago. It, it, you just don't walk in, and I feel, you know, Seth probably – realizes that he missed an opportunity he should have really wanted to be. You start as an intern, then you do quality control. I mean, that's what Deuce Staley did. It's hard. And you got to work your way you up. you got to work your and way up. And you know up. what? Those, those hours stink. That's why I think a lot of really good players don't do it, because they, they put in their time. I know. And you just can't walk in and be a, a coach. Jonathan Gannon has coached 14 years in the NFL, and he had years at, I think, three years at Louisville as well. Yep. You know, so he's been a coach, and I've heard so many good things about the guy. He's not a dope, as people imply. He's not. He doing... was also in the front office with the Rams at one point, I believe. Like, and a, a scout, a scout, yeah, right? He was, he was doing scout. that kind of stuff. So you yeah. know, it, it's enough already. It's enough. It's it's an easy narrative for talk radio, and I understand it. But you got to have some semblance of sanity and reality, and it's just, and you got to give him a whole an entire season. You know, I, you know they, they make fun of Jeffrey Lurie, and he's heard about Jonathan Gannon. Well, you know, the thing is, I heard about Andy Reid before he came here. I was saying, who is Andy Reid? That's what I'm saying. And then Ray Rhodes told me about him, and then I checked with other people. And I actually met him before he was the Eagles coach when he was with the Packers, and they were in the Super Bowl. I went up to nobody sitting at his, you know, how they have those tables. Yeah, who's Andy Reid in yeah. 1997? So I walk up to him, and he's reading the USA Today, and I introduce myself, and but I didn't know enough about him, but I heard a lot of good things about him. Now, you don't know if that translates into a coach at another level, right. but you got to give him a chance. Andy, what was Andy Reid's first year? It was disastrous, Five right? Five and 11. Okay. And then the next year, wasn't he in the playoffs the yes. next year? Yes. Okay. You got to get, you can't win without good players. Yeah. Uh, See, I, I've been more frustrated, Howard, with, with Sirianni's coaching at times because I thought he was misusing what he had. And he, I think he's figured it out a little bit. Like the last two weeks, well, it the takes off, time, it doesn't does, it? And, yeah. and he, but he figured it out. I don't really know if Gannon's misusing it. What does he have on defense? <laughs> right. If that front four doesn't get home, he's screwed. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's the way this defense was built. And you win with pressure from your front four. Yeah. And I thought uh, Josh Sweat was going to be better this year. He's well, I think the Eagles did too because they paid him. And Derek Barnett is Derek Barnett. Oh, I Howard, would say he's, he's, not, he's not going to be here. Well, he's year. stealing $10 million. Okay. Fletcher Cox is not as good a player. You can talk about double, you can talk about a lot of things, but he's still, he's been double teamed all his career. But he's been successful, but he's not, for whatever reason, and when you get older, those things happen. He's not the same player. He might be good, but he's not really good. I agree. Let's put it there. And then uh, Hargrave has given the Eagles some really good games, but you can't do it with one. You've got to have pressure from your front four. It's got to work. And then the linebackers are just eh, okay. They're okay. Yeah, they might have found the two that are the best. The Edwards and, and Taylor and might. Edwards had some moments last year, too. He can play a little bit. Yeah. I, it's taken them a long time to put him on the field. 215-592-9494. That's how you hop in. Eagles, Broncos, Sunday. And I got to ask Howard when we get back about where Howie Roseman is tonight and what we think that might mean. Just doing his job or more to it. 215-592-9494. That's how you hop aboard right here on Sports Radio 94 WIP. NFL Week 10 is here in FanDuel Sports. We can partnership with Valley Force Casino. Wants you to get the most out of every play. That's why they're giving everyone a $10 risk-free bet every week. Thursday night is a great opportunity to give it a try. All you have to do is bet a same-game parlay bet with three legs or more. And if your bet doesn't win... FanDuel will pay back up to $10. One I like for, how about tonight? I'll go Baltimore to win this game. I will take them minus the 7.5, and, and I'll go over Lamar Jackson's rushing yards. Let's go with a touchdown for the tight end, Mark Andrews. 
Look, it's fast and easy to use, safe and secure on FanDuel. And FanDuel Sportsbook is the official partner of 94 WIP. There's no feeling like now on the same game parlay bet. So lock in your bet today on FanDuel Sportsbook. Get up to 10 bucks back if your bet does a win. New to FanDuel Sportsbook, sign up today. Promo code Gilio to also receive 30 to 1 enhanced odds on either team to win during the Monday night matchup between the Rams and 49ers. Win $150 on a $5 bet. That's promo code G I G L I O. So they know I sent you. Farmer's Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a Farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Another me. And when you have multiple Farmer's Policies, you could save up to 45% on your auto insurance with the Auto Multi-Policy Discount. What's going on with our voice? I thought I'd add some drama. Well, isn't that something? Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges, Farmers New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. Angie's list is now Angie, and caring for your home just got easier. Whether you need help with routine maintenance or a dream remodel, Angie makes it easy to see reviews, compare quotes, and connect with top local pros who can get the job done right. Plus, you can see upfront pricing and instantly book hundreds of projects. No phone tag, just the work you need done at a time that works for you. Angie's got your to-do list covered from start to finish. Book your next home project today at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Up to 30% of U.S. military members and veterans are battling PTSD, even those who weren't injured or in combat. If you're one of the many, you should know that you don't have to suffer. Treatment for PTSD is available. If you suffer from PTSD-related depression and anxiety, you're not alone. There are so many veterans and current enlisted just like you. You don't have to suffer. Find the help and resources you need and deserve at ConnectingVets.com. This month on the 11th, Pineapple Street Studios presents The Beige Room, a three-part series about a notorious self-help seminar. Host and filmmaker Kelly Loudenberg asks why millions of people are flocking to spend their weekends in beige hotel ballrooms, divulging their deepest secrets with hundreds of strangers. Supporters say that what takes years of therapy to do, this program can do in a weekend. But how? And what are the consequences? That's this month on the 11th. Just search for the 11th now wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back, Sports Radio 94 WIP. We're riding with the King, as always, brought to you by Xfinity. Philadelphia's fast internet and the sponsor of our Xfinity X1 Labs. We'll get to your calls in a second, and we'll get set for the Sixers game in a little while as they play the Raptors tonight. It sounds like Tobias Harris is back from COVID, which is, is very good news. But Howard, tonight, uh, we'll, we'll be watching a little bit of this uh, Thursday night football game. The uh, the Ravens and the, and the Dolphins yep. will have it on WIP, but... Howie Roseman will not be watching that game, Howard, because Howie Roseman, along with five or four other GMs and a whole bunch of scouts, he's going to be at the uh, North Carolina Pitt game, which has Sam Howell, the quarterback for North Carolina, Kenny Pickett, the quarterback for Pittsburgh. Do you think this is Howie Roseman doing his job, or do you think this is because of the impending quarterback decision coming up? I think it's both. Uh, It's an easy trip. Get a private, get your own plane. Yeah, you get to so, see two um, possible first round pick yeah, quarterbacks. It's, it's what is it? A forty minute flight by plane. Yep, to Pitt. Yeah, uh, to Pitt. Uh, that's where they're playing tonight. And uh, I think it's both. I think you're doing your job uh, by looking at because you have you're going to have maybe one or two top ten picks. Mm-hmm. I think they'll I, they'll get probably one, uh, but whatever the case may be. So you're doing your job, and you're looking at one of the quarterbacks. Uh, that could be, I don't know. There's some people that really like him. Pickett, you're talking about. Yeah, Pickett, the quarterback for Pitt, and four year. He's a four year player. Sometimes you wonder about those guys because well, did he just have the one year? And just for context, he's 24 right now. I think 24 years old. Yeah. Like Hertz is 23, so he's already older at this point. And then for, I mean, Hertz is the quarterback here, but some guys come out of 22 years old. He's going to come out of 24 right. years old and that, yeah, that that makes a little bit of a difference so is he a top 10 pick uh, not yet but you go out and look at him and see what he's got and it's like i said it's an easy flight go out there after the game you come back uh, it's not a big deal and then you'll still go out to the team uh, going to denver right. on saturday when they leave so yeah it's he's doing his job that's number one and I'm sure there's other people from the Eagles staff oh, yeah. I, I, that are going out well, there. Well, almost every it. team in the NFL is at this game tonight. They're all – Right. Because yeah. you have two quarterbacks that could go in the first round. And it's nobody else is playing. Right. Uh, it's the only game in college football tonight. 
So nobody else is playing, and it's it's a perfect opportunity for people to go out and scout. You don't have to worry about going to this place, that place. And a lot of times, you don't even go to a game. You go to their practices to see how he practices. But this is an opportunity to go to a game. So I think he's doing a little bit of both. In case they need the quarterback, okay, you'll know, you'll learn something about this guy. It won't be the only game they look at. Right. Well, him. better not be. But, uh, but he's doing both his job. And just in case. Yeah, I'll just say just in case. Yeah, it's interesting. That, that one thing that's going to be really interesting, Howard, as we get to the offseason, and we'll see how Jalen plays the next eight games here, it doesn't seem like there is a great quarterback in this class. And maybe one emerges, no. but it, like some years it's like, oh, that's the guy. I don't think this year has that guy. Uh, from people that I talked to, they thought the quarterback at Liberty, and I forget Malik what Willis. Okay. but then I they, watched him against Ole Miss. I, I didn't love yeah, what I saw. had a couple of yeah. some off games. Um, he had skills, but as of a couple of weeks ago, and talking to a couple of people, nobody projected any of them to be a top ten. So, and that's really, you know, if they hey listen, if for some reason there's a quarterback that slides to the end of the first round, you might want to do something because you probably got some picks that can move yourself sure. in there. Who the heck wasn't? Didn't somebody trade for Bridgewater at the end of the first round? Yeah, Minnesota moved in. Okay, that's even the, well, the same thing happened with Lamar Jackson. Uh, the, the right, great, Baltimore did the it. The Eagles pick because they that was the year they won the right. Super Bowl. They had the last pick in the first round. Baltimore moved in. That was Ozzie Newsom that uh, made that. He game. left them a quarterback before he yeah, left. Yeah. Right. Um, so you know, so you just you you're doing your job depending on where he goes, and you might want to. Yeah, he's not top ten, but maybe if you get into the twenties, you might take a chance on. him. So that's what you look at. And the reality is you might need another quarterback down the line anyway. I mean, Minshew's here for next year. Then you don't know what you're going to do with him. And it's not hard to have three quarterbacks. I don't even know who the, who's the third quarterback on the team. Right now the kid they took from Miami. Remember they, oh, made, yeah. they made that shuffle when Flacco was traded? And I'll say this. Miami has no quarterbacks. Zero. And they let this guy go. So it's just, it's a body. And, you know, he just, whatever. He, I, I'm, no ill will towards him, but he's, he's not going to do anything. So you're going to need another quarterback anyway. So depending on where he may go, I mean, you could start some opinions, but I think he's doing his job. And just in case. Let's talk to Victor and only. What's up, Victor? Hey, guys, listen, always enjoy it. Howard, you know, I always have my issues with you, but I want to say something. The fact that you got on the air and asked people to quell this violence, I think it's a class act for you, but I appreciate that. Uh, and I, and I, I really do. I, sincerely, uh, we need uh, some some common sense uh, uh, stuff going on, and I, yeah, I just appreciate you making that. As you a, know what? As uh, I really do. I Seriously. The city, city has gone so far downhill, yeah. and it's because of that. It's close to 500 homicides by guns. Yeah, Please, it's crazy. Please, just it's stop, crazy. man. Yeah, that's, that's a heartbreaking number. It is. Yeah, it it's, is. It's, heartbreaking. It is. it's heartbreaking, and it's going to really take a, uh, the entire community to come together. To yeah. But well, very quickly, I listen, I, I'm not one of those people that root for uh, the demise of any coach. Uh, you know, it's kind of weird sometimes, you know, being a Philadelphia fan. The reality is, you know, these, these are new coaches. Um, but, listen, I, I I don't know what to say about and, and, you know, people focus on the offensive side of the ball. I'm a defensive guy. I grew up – I'm an old head. I, I grew up with, you know, Clyde Simmons, you know, uh, Seth Joyner, you know, Wesley White. And I, I, I guess I'm a little selfish in that perspective. But when your defense is kind of like not getting off the field on third down, I mean, there, there's some there's some glaring issues in – and I and I and I hear what you're saying. Look, the players that they have, I, it's 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 obvious, right? But but at the end of the year, um, if we don't see progression, is it is it going to fall on Gannon, or are they going to give him another year? Because uh, something's got to give, you know. Like the well, third word, year. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to well, give him another. Well, year. Well, let me say, and Victor, it's an interesting point, Howard. I I All would right. think they do, but how about this, Howard? You said it. You said there's no chance that they get torched by these quarterbacks down the stretch. Howard, I agree with you. But if the next eight weeks go by and we're watching Heineke and Daniel Jones and Teddy Bridgewater and Simeon put up 30 points and 75% completion, we might have to have a discussion. Wait, wait, that's a hypothetical. Right, that's, but that's a hypothetical. Uh, there's no reality to that <laughs> hypothetical. There's right. no reality. Well, there better not be. Uh, no, well, yeah, but there's no reality to that. It's it just, come on, let's be honest when you see the quarterbacks. You, 
they don't have good enough players. I think we all agree with that. They need more. So you yeah. got to give him more than just one year to see what he does with better players. And because they have so many draft picks, maybe two of those three first-round picks, assuming they're going to get all three, two of them will be defensive players, and that would be a good thing. Well, they better be. They've used all these picks on offensive players yeah, for years. Know, you got you to you gotta, even it out a little yeah, bit. And, and there'll be some there'll – be, there'll, be there'll be a trade. It's not easy to trade in the NFL. Uh, but I'll say this. If they traded – and you can give you uh, Fletcher Cox. Oh, the Eagles didn't really want to trade me. Believe me, those discussions will start up again. They trade him for a good pick, and I don't know what kind of pick they can get for him. If, if, I said if, I'm not saying they will. If, is that okay if you get another younger player yeah, I, so they can all grow together? I'm fine with that. Yeah, it's just give Jonathan Gannon a chance. He's, he's no dope. He's been around 14 years in the league. Uh, he had a chance to go to a good team. He decided with the Rams, and you didn't know how good they were going to be, as Joe pointed out. It's, I mean, you can't just fire a coach because the team didn't play well defensively with average at best players in almost all the positions, and I'm being kind. Listen, Howard, the team is 3-6. and six. We need someone fired every week, and we need to bench the quarterback. <laughs> it's the only way to fix things. Yeah. Gary's an ambler. What's up, Gary? Hey, how you guys doing? Great, Good, Gary. What's up? Hey, hey, great. It's first time talking to the king, so I appreciate that. That's all right. You're um, speaking of royalty, so I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Just playing some golf today in North Hills. But, uh, Good. Nice what I want to say is, yeah, yeah, it was nice. Um, what I want to say is, I, I, you know, so I, I, I agree with you, but I don't agree with you guys about um, Gannon. So he did have all the off season to see what he had and to make a scheme and to – try to game plan what he had. Now, maybe this is the best game plan he has is to, is to you know, not press the receivers and lay back and, and hope the offense can win. So I'm not quite sure. So I'm, I'm kind of in between on both of you guys. Like, I'm kind of thinking, like, well, he had the offseason. He knew what okay. he had. He had the offseason with these players. All right, give me on defense four players. You say, man, these guys can play. Give me just four. All right. Well, Fletcher Cox, Hargrave. Uh, oh, 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 I'm going to challenge you on that. Fletcher Cox is not as good as he used to be. So we think about the old Fletcher Cox, but he's still okay. Yeah. Still good. All right. He and Hargrave. That's it on the defense. How about I frame it like this? How many players are better than just good on defense? Well, yeah. so I don't know if there's the, any. Maybe Hargrave. That's a good point, Maybe Joe. just Hargrave. And, and it was my point. He should have known that going in. So he. Yeah, but what's he going to do? What are you going to shake a tree and well, you're going to have yeah, good players I, fall out? And well, that's why I agree with you. That's where I half agree with you in that that do more you now. know they should have known like they don't really have a chance. Okay, but what are they play. then? What do they do? I love the people. It's another stupid statement by mm-hmm. Joe DeCamera. Well, you go out and you have cap room. Go out and get a player. Well, yeah. if there's nobody out there, what are you going to do? Uh, are you just going to? You're walking by. You got money in your pocket. You're walking by a store. Yeah. You're just going to go in and buy something because you got money in your pocket. Well, you want to get something good. Uh, so yeah. just because no, you have I money doesn't I, mean you I, can I get a player. Given, I agree with giving Jonathan Gannon another year. I totally at agree. At least, with that. yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, Gary, here, and Gary, here's the thing. We appreciate the phone call. I, he has tried some new things. Yes. Like it, they blitzed on Sunday more than they had the entire season. So like, I, it seems like he's damned if he do, does, damned if he doesn't. That's Jonathan Gannon right now. Now it's got to be better the next eight weeks. These quarterbacks aren't any good, and if if it's worse in eight weeks. Then we have to have a discussion about him. But right now, I'm going to give him the next eight if. weeks to figure this out. If. Hypotheticals. Lots I don't deal with hypoth- hypotheticals. <laughs> right. Well, that's what we do here. All right. Trust the pregame. No. Really? Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, really? Trust Wait, the pregame. 24/7. Delivered to you by PGW. PGW delivering safe, reliable energy to Philadelphia for more than 180 years. PGW Energy for all of us. Visit PGWorks.com for details. Howard, tonight, the Sixers and the Raptors. We get some good news. On the uh, injury front here, Howard, it sounds like Tobias Harris is coming back. That I mean, helps. In the COVID front, yeah. In the COVID front, he'll be back. Well, the, yes, the, uh, the the safety protocols. Yeah. What would you think of the way that – well, let me ask you this. I'll, I'll put it – because I was discussing this a little bit last night. I, I need your opinion on this. So, Tyrese Maxey played well the other night. And, and you called the way that game would go, right? They got off to a good start. They had a lead. And then at the end, they, they fell yeah, off, yeah, right. which was going to happen, right? They didn't have enough players. Yep. So, they lose to the Bucks, But Maxey has a big game. And now everyone's all in love with Tyrese Maxey, who I yeah. like. Howard, if if the uh, if a, if the Portland Trailblazers called and they said, "We'll give you Dame, 
you, you'll give us Ben. We also want Maxi. I'm still trading him. I, I, he's not become some sort of untouchable for me, even though he's played well. Would uh, you trade him? Yes. Yes. Uh, and here's why. He's a nice player. I want to see what he scores tonight. Because what I've seen from him, he has a really good game. Up and down. He's up and down. He was, I think he shot six for 19 the game before the yeah. other night. He's up and down. So this is, um, I don't know when their next game is after this. They go on the road for a while after this. It's a crazy schedule. The NBA just stuffed games in here. So what they have? Is this the third game in four nights? They played. Yes, yeah, the third Monday, game in four nights. Tuesday, Thursday. Yes. Yeah. So tonight they're home against the Raptors here at seven. Then they play Saturday in Indiana, and then next week they go to they go to Utah next Tuesday. That will be a difficult game. Yeah, they got no shot. Uh, but in Utah, no shot. Here's what I'll tell you: I want to see him be more consistent. Doesn't mean he have to score thirty, right? Uh, but he's got to be more consistent. And here's what I'm going to tell you. The line's only four, right? On tonight's game? Yeah. And the Raptors played last night. Then they got smoked, which means they're not going to play as poorly tonight. Uh, Who'd they get beat by? They got smoked last night. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing four and a half for the game tonight. Uh, And and six are at home. With with Tobias back. Now, we're not sure how much he's going to play, though. He might be on a minutes restriction night. I would take the points. Now, I don't know that they're going to lose the game, but I would take the points. I, I... I just want to see more consistency out of these young players. That's what I want to see. Uh, And, you know, Drummond gets all these rebounds, but I don't know what impact he has. That means other people aren't getting the rebounds. So Yeah, the Raptors lost to the uh, Celtics last night in Boston. Yeah, they got smoked. Yeah, Uh, 104-88. So that line's too cheap, isn't it? I don't care if Embiid's not playing it or not. Yeah, Toronto, Simmons is a waste of time. You don't even count him anymore. And Toronto is not a very good team. They lost Lowry. No, they're, right. they're a younger team. Why they're is just, it only four, four and a half? Well, because the Sixers still without Embiid. They're still without Thibel, who makes some, some difference yeah, on defense. and with Seth Curry, I guess, is not back, right? Curry had the foot issue the other, other couple yeah, of nights okay. ago. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's, I think it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. But you brought up Maxie. I want to see him more be more consistent for games. That doesn't mean you have to score 20-some points a game. That means you have to be more consistent. Uh, but I, I'd rather have him a point guard than than uh, Benjamin uh, because at least he can shoot. Uh, he can distribute. In today's game, he passed it to an open shooter. The Sixers, they got they got killed the other night by Barkley for taking away. <laughs> Charles is great. He says, all they do is jack up threes. No oh, kidding. It's That's work. That's the whole NBA now. I know. Yeah, but you kind of move it around. You just don't get to the three-point line and jack it up, which which the Sixers do a lot more than certain teams. Well, they're with now they they've taken a player off the court that refuses to shoot, so they they, they look yeah, like a team now yeah, that shoots. They're just jacking them up. So, uh, but Maxi, here's what he's done this year. You mentioned up and down. So, 31 a couple nights ago. Before that, 16, 10, 20, 14, 10, 16, 16, 7, 14, up and down. Yeah, he's up and down, and you got to see more consistency, and that's when players grow, and then. Uh, Shake Milton will, will, eventually will see what he can do when he's uh, uh, when he starts playing. Uh, it, it's just it, it, they're okay. Uh, the record is meaningless to me because it's the beginning of the season and it's just they're meaningless. There's too many games uh, each season in the NBA. But I want to see if he's going to be that that player. He's got to be more consistent. Yeah. Again, you don't have to have great games every game. Right. And I like him. He's grown. He's gotten better from last yep. year. But I'm not letting him to hold up a deal to get and a, a Dame Lillard. He came from uh, Kentucky, right? Yeah. So a good college coach. Calipari, Calipari gave him a big endorsement when he got here. Calipari's a really good coach. Yes, and he puts uh, a lot of good players in the NBA. Yes, he does. Uh, so I, I, we got to see how they do. But um, it'll be interesting. Um, you know, in – in the future to see how good these players and people fall in love with players quickly. Young players that do well around here. We love them. People fall in and out of love yeah. so quickly with players in this town, especially young ones. Cause you feel like that the, yep. the sky's the limit for these guys. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what they do. It's just, uh, I don't think this is going to be any, for whatever reason, I just don't think this is going to be. And before I even saw the number, uh, I didn't think cause the Raptors got blown out. That means, oh, and they're back-to-back. That should be easy. 
I, for whatever reason, I don't think it's going to be easy. Yeah, and they're well coached. I mean, they're, they're a well coached team. The Riders with yes. Nick Nurse. Yeah, a couple of years yep. where they won that title. All right, trust the pregame delivered to you by PGW. PGW delivering safe, reliable energy to Philadelphia for more than 100 years. PGW energy for all of us. Visit pgworks.com for details. All right, Howard. We have to hit what to watch for here, which is, of course, sponsored by our friends at Xfinity. Philadelphia is fast in Philadelphia and the, uh, the sponsor of Xfinity Expo and Lounge. Howard, here's what I'm watching for. There's a lot of, um, a lot of Phillies rumors coming out. Their GM's meetings are going on this weekend. I'm curious what you think. So they have, they've spent, right, every, for the past four years, every year they'll, they'll spend on somebody, whether it's Bryce Harper, Arietta. Uh, last year they brought they re-signed Real Muto. Like they do this every year. They sign. They, they sign well, how some, about D.D. Gregorius? That didn't flat work out. out right. stiff. Well, it doesn't mean it always works out. Arietta didn't yeah, work out. Right. But they're connected now. Dombrowski said closers. He said left fielder. He said center fielder. Well, you think? Do you think they're going to spend again on another big player? No. I don't. I, it doesn't. No. It feels I like think they'll get a out. player that will be a shorter contract. Okay. Maybe decent money, but not big money. What is Sterling Marte? I heard that name come yeah, up. Yeah, center fielder. I like him a lot. He had 310 last year, 47 stolen bases. Well, if he asks for big money, I don't think you can lock yourself into that. He, and he's 33 years old. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem. And he, I think he's going to be 34 during the season, right? So I don't think you can lock yourself into – you want to sign a two-year contract. You might have to give him three, but that makes him – I think he'll be 37 at the end of his – how many guys are you going to have that are going to be – that old three years from They're now. They're all going to get old at the same time. Yeah, right. And it's just you got to have some – you got to hope your farm system. They'll sign somebody, but I don't think they'll go big, crazy money. And now relievers, the way teams lose relievers, you don't have to pay a closer crazy money anymore. Uh, th- those days are over because you just got to get a bunch of solid guys that may not necessarily be closers. The days of a closer making $15 million, I think, are over. Well, I, I- – I think you're right, and I wouldn't pay one, but it sounds like Dombrowski wants a closer. And if you want one, you're going to okay. pay for one in free agency. Okay. Well, unless he gonna, trades for one. Well, uh, and trade might be uh, a possibility. Craig Kimbrell? He had him in Boston. Yeah. I, I, he's He had two bad years before he had a good year. And then he struggled after he got traded to the White Sox. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't want Craig Kimbrell. He's done. Uh, but who else is out there? Well, I mean, the guys in free agency, they're going to want $15 million. They could trade for someone. That's good. What they want is I'm not giving it to them. You know, if you get to the point and build your team with a solid bullpen up until that closer, you're, you're okay. Did, who's the closer for Tampa? They had such a good – they just uh, ran they, guys yeah, out they, there. They changed it. It's not even one yeah, guy right. locked in. Yeah, yeah. and they, I, they signed somebody from Tampa. The they same already thing with won- the Giants. They had se- seven different guys close games. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so – right, it, that's a good point. Because if you have a solid guy, I know it's a mentality, but you don't have to pay that money because it's better to invest that money in other relievers that right. are better. Well, I think the Phillies should invest in a center field or left field. I mean, they have, they have nothing yeah. there. Yeah. So they, they've got a, there's too many, they need too many players. Well, that's and you can't problem. win by just keep on, by continually going out and signing free agents. You've got to have a system. So I think this is really just a stage of carryover to get to play young players that might be good players and you develop them, which is two to three years away. Uh, well, you know what the shame of all this is? Th- this should be the time, this coming year, that Hazley, yeah. Moniak, they should, this is when those guys were supposed to be ready. When they were drafted, you figured, okay, four or five years down the line, they're your starting outfielders. They stink. That skim milk draft actually turned out to be a decent Pretty draft. Pretty good. Ian yeah. Anderson was in that draft, helped the Braves win a World Series. Yeah, yeah. There was somebody that was drafted two that's not a bad player. Who the hell was drafted number two that year after uh, Mickey Moniak? Mickey Moniak. Well, they were all better. They were yeah. all better than Mickey Moniak. Yeah, it's just... Senzel from the Reds. And didn't somebody come out of that draft that won the Cy Young? Shane Bieber. Yeah. From the, from, uh, they're, not the, they're not the Indians anymore. They're the Guardians, the Cleveland Guardians. Oh, right. Uh, it's just, you got to be kidding me. So they're going to have to develop players. You just can't. Everybody, oh, free agents, spend money, spend money. Well, it, that's all well and good, but that doesn't win for you because you have to develop players because then your payroll gets out of control. Uh, it's just, I still, I think that Harper's going to win the MVP. He just won the Silver Slugger, Tucker. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's great. Uh, it's just uh, congratulations. But uh, He's going to win it. He's on track to win it. Half He's a million it dollars. Uh, it, it sickens me. You could use that. 
to put to, uh, I just don't get me get me started. So, yeah, it's a charity, and it's nothing wrong with Bryce Harper. It's just the Phillies' mistake for giving. Listen, we just gave you three hundred thirty million. You need half a million if you're going to be an MVP. That's what we paid you for. Right, the contracts for that. All right, Howard, let's end with this. Our end our hour. Next time we talk is Tuesday. I have a feeling we're getting a win on Sunday. I think he was going to win this game. Yeah, uh, I think they have a chance. But what I'm going to do because people are so angry with me uh, because. Last week I, on Saturday, I classified Philadelphia as Dopadelphia. <laughs> I, I am just going to sit back, just relax at the Borgata, and let people have their say. And I'm going to try to keep my mouth shut. Just, just give me your thoughts. Open lines for two Open hours. Open lines for two hours. You just go for it. I'm going to listen to that. <laughs> yell at Howard for two hours. Yeah, you can yell at me for two hours, and I'll try to keep my, try to keep quiet. I might have trouble by the end of it. Uh, the bay is near uh, the Borgata. Yeah. I might have to go out and jump in the yeah, bay I mean, listen, after I'm done. Th- yeah. Depending on how many dopes call you up on, on Saturday. All right, Howard, we'll listen on Saturday. We'll talk next Tuesday. Okay. Howard Esk, we're riding with the Joe, K- you have a great night. Thank you, you, too. Have a great weekend. Tucker, the same thing. And for everybody out there, just remember, there's always tomorrow. <laughs> there's always tomorrow. Riding with the King is always brought to you by Xfinity, Philadelphia's fast internet, and the sponsor of our Xfinity X1 Lounge. Hello, I'm Jason Concepcion, former co-host of Binge Mode, Ravenclaw with Gryffindor Rising, still repping the Night's Watch despite Season 8, and the host of Crooked Media's new podcast, x Vision. Every week, my guests and I will take you through the world of comic book movies, fantasy shows, and more. Join us as we deep dive into your favorite franchises, discuss fan theories, and the latest news. Listen now for free on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. With Farmers, you could get savings just for becoming a customer. It's a little extra something. So to tell you about it, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Precious baby giggles. (laughs) When you switch to Farmers, you could save an average of $437 on your home insurance. And that's a whole lot of something, baby. Ah, get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data July 2020 to 21, underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate, products not available in every state. Angie's List is now Angie, and caring for your home just got easier. Whether you need help with routine maintenance or a dream remodel, Angie makes it easy to see reviews, compare quotes, and connect with top local pros who can get the job done right. Plus, you can see upfront pricing and instantly book hundreds of projects. No phone tag, just the work you need done at a time that works for you. Angie's got your to-do list covered from start to finish. Book your next home project today at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com.